hello friends welcome back in this video we are going to start with a pattern program okay and this is again an example of nested loop so if you are not familiar with the concept of nested loop please watch the video of nested loop first okay and this program will definitely help you to improve your logic now first of all we are going to solve a program that will print a grid pattern so that pattern can be of a star can be of a number and can be of a alphabet also okay so as you can see here, here every row has same number of columns means on first row there is five stars on second row also there is five star on third row also there are five stars and same thing is here also so basically we want to print a grid of n by n and what we want to do we want to accept that n value okay we want to accept that n value from user I means suppose user enter the value of n as 5 output should look like this I means it should it should print a grid of 5 by 5 star if user enter the value of n as 3 it should print a grid of 3 by 3 of number of star or of alphabets okay so let us start with a simple part first of all we will print a fixed symbol that is star so as you can see here how many rows we want to print we want to print n rows and every n row has n columns okay so first of all i'll scan the value of n from user okay oh, sorry not curly braces now my for loop start and as i told you in a concept of nested for loop or nested loop that your outer loop represents a row and inner loop represents a column so how many rows i want to print i want to print n rows so i'll say i is equal to 1 i less than or equal to n and i plus plus okay how many columns i want to print i want to print n columns so again for the inner loop i'll assign a variable j actually you can use any variables so just according to the convention i am using i and j you can use x y anything okay now i think logic is quite simple hmm? what we have to do we have to just print the star which is the fixed message big fixed text okay and when you complete with your inner loop don't forget to print a new line so it will print the next row star on the new line see computer can print in this order that is z order exactly in the way that your printer prints so you you have to complete one horizontal line first and then only you can switch to the next line okay so here what will i do let us call it as i and let us call it as j okay initially my i is what one j is also what one so for i's value 1 j will execute how many times it will execute 5 times and due to this my this loop will work 5 times or n times and it will print 5 stars on this line next time the value of i will be 2 and j again start with 1 j again start with 1 and again 1 to 5 stars get printed okay so let us dry run this part so it will be more clear to you time being i am considering the value of n as 3 so we initialize i with j i with 1 and j with also 1 so first of all it will come here i is initialized with 1 as i told you we consider the value of n as 3 okay now is 1 less than 3 yes 1 is less than 3 so it will come inside this loop j get initialized with 1 is it less than 3 yes so first star get printed okay the star get printed now what happened here your inner loop execute first so value of j get incremented by 1 and value of i will remain 1 only so j will be 2 is 2 less than 3 yes 2 is less than 3 so what happened again star get printed so second star get printed on the same line 
Now again j will incremented by 1 and i remain 1 only. So j will be what? 3. Okay. Is 3 less than 3? Yes. So again condition evaluates to 2. It will come inside this loop. And again one star get printed. And j will be incremented by 1. It will be 4. Now when it comes at a loop condition of an inner loop, your condition evaluates to fall because j is greater than n. So since it evaluates to fall, what happens? It will come outside this loop and new line get printed. So your cursor will be transferred to the new line. Okay. Now your outer loop will start execution. Okay. Now it will take a next value of i. So next value of i will be what? 2. Hmm? Is it less than n? Yes, it is less than n. So your j again starts with 1 because it newly enters in this loop. So your j will initialize with 1. It is less than 3. So this start get printed. Then again j will incremented by 1. It will be 2. It is less than 3. So star get printed. Again it will be incremented by 1 which is 3. One more star get printed. And when it becomes 4, condition evaluates to false, it will come out of the loop and new line get printed. So cursor will be moved to the next line. Then i's value get incremented. So the last value of i was 2. So it will be 3. Again your j loop will start iterating from 1 to 3. And according to that, your 3 stars get printed. Okay. So as you can see here, your outer loop remains same for the all the iteration of a inner loop. When outer loops initial increment by 1 or updated by 1, okay, again your inner loop starts from the beginning to n. Okay. So as you can see here, when I say printf star, the star get printed. But suppose I want this pattern. For this pattern, look at here. Which value is changing? Your value is changing in changing by row wise. Okay, means if you look at here, i value remains same throughout this process. Since your j value changes, i value remains same. So for this pattern, what we have to say? We have to say printf percent d i. Okay, because throughout this process, when your inner loop complete, till your inner loop complete, the value of i will be what? 1 only. In the next iteration, value of i will be what? 2. And it will remain same throughout the completion of inner loop and so on. But if you observe here, you have here your value changes column wise. And look at here. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Means here, what we have to print? We have to print the value of what? J. Percent D. J. So I hope you got this. Let us execute this program in code block first. And then after we will try the pattern of grid pattern for the alphabet. So let me declare two variable i, j and n also which we are going to input. So printf say enter limit. Let us scan this value in n. So m percent n. Then for i equal to 1, i less than or equal to n and i plus plus. So as I said you can use any variable. It is not necessarily to use i and j. So j less than or equal to n and j plus plus. And just we want to print a single line. So I will not enclose it in a curly braces. So I will just say, so sorry, I have to print a star. Okay. And when we complete with an inner loop, what we want to print? We want to print new line. Okay. So let us run this. See, I will enter 5. Look at here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows get printed and there are, oh, there are 6 stars. I think something is wrong here. Yes, I initialize my j with 0. It should initialize with 1. 
So let us run this and let us check the output. See, now there are five stars and five rows. So what you can do here, you can put a space here also before and after this. So it will get uh, well formatted. See, okay. Now let us print the value of i and we will see what will be the output percent d comma i so let us check it and end of 5 see 1 1 1 2 2 2 3 3 3 4 4 4 5 5 5 suppose again you want to be it in a proper format in that case you can specify the spaces along with this say 3 3d means fit your output in three spaces let us check it see two spaces are left and one will be get fitted here okay so in total three spaces your integer number get fit now let us change this i by j and let us observe the output now in that case i should get a series like this 1 2 3 4 5 see 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I hope you got this. If you run, if you dry run this program, then definitely it is easy. Now, what I want, uh, which pattern I want? I want alphabet pattern. Okay, it will be again in the grid format. So let us write a program for this. So suppose I want format something like this: A A A B B B and C C C. Now for alphabets what we have to do? We have to check for its ASCII value. Okay. For alphabets we have to write a code according to its ASCII value. See the ASCII value of capital A, capital A is what? 65. And here if I am going to print a pattern, grid pattern of 3 by 3, I have to print 65 then 66 and then 67 okay so here definitely my value is changing from what my value is changing row wise my value is what my value is changing row wise so what have to do instead of n okay suppose i enter the value of n as 3 and i started with 65 and what is the condition 65 less than or equal to 3 is it possible? No, it never possible. So what I have to do? I have to say 65 is less than 65 plus 3. Okay, now 65 less than what? 68. So whatever n value you have took, whatever n value you have took from the user, what we have to do? We have to add that n to our initialization part. Otherwise, this condition never satisfies. If you are comparing it with n, it will never satisfy. What we have to do? We have to add 3 or we have to add n to our initialization value. Then only this will work. So, here what will I do? Let us make a change in this code. See, instead of this, okay, I have to initialize my i with what? 65. My condition will be what? 65 plus n. My condition will be what? 65 plus n. Let us write this part again. So it will be more readable. So i is equal to what? 65. i is less than or not equal to because if you say equal to see what we want we want the result Six, for 65 66 and 67 only if you go to till 68 then what happens one extra row get printed that's why i'll say less than 65 plus n and i plus plus now here definitely you will print the value of what i and while printing instead of percent d what you will say percent c so it will print its character equivalent okay it will print its character equivalent now 
let us run this program first and then after we will see another pattern so what changes i have to do here here i have to initialize my i with 65 if you want to print a smaller case value then start with uh, 90 97 yes start with 97 okay so say 65 so not less than 65 not less than or equal to we have to say just less than 65 plus n and here instead of d i have to say percent c and we are printing the value of i here there is no necessity to change the inner loop condition and initialization because inner loop goes how many times inner loop goes three times so it will just count it the purpose of this inner loop is to just count it okay so there is no need to change the inner loop so let us run the program so let me enter 5 look at here a a a a b b b b and a d d and e e e okay now suppose we want exactly different opposite pattern means something like this our value should get changed column wise a b c a b c a b c so what we have to do here now since my value is changing column by definitely i have to print a j because j represents column so instead of j i'll say inner loop represents column and outer loop represents row here my values are changing row wise that's why i make a change in outer loop here my value is changing column wise so i have to write the same part here okay means j is equal to 65 j less than 65 plus n and j plus plus and i'll print the value of j outer loop is for just counting a number of rows okay so let us try it in a code block directly so here i'll say i is equal to 1 i will be less than or equal to n so here i have to take it make a changes so 65 65 plus n i hope you got this condition 65 plus n and now instead of i i'll say print j so let us run this so i'll enter three say a b c a b c a b c okay so let us try for bigger value so it should be below 26 remember this thing because there are only 26 alphabets okay so i hope you got this and you got the pattern of grid and if you have any doubt you can write it into the comment section i definitely try to solve your problem okay and please do the practice of this pattern program and once you understand this grid pattern because grid pattern is very simple okay in next video we are going to study a triangle pattern which is little bit complicated so if you understand the grid pattern then only you can understand the further complicated pattern Thank you.